Okay, there is a Republican state representative in Minnesota named Dwayne Quam, and he seems like a really angry guy. He's running against Jamie Malberg, who's female, and Jamie Malberg is giving him a run for his money. Uh, Quam has been the incumbent, and he's been in for four terms. He's the Republican. Jamie Malberg is the Democrat. They had a debate where they had to share a microphone, which sounds crazy, it's not ideal, but in local races, these sorts of things can happen at debates where even though you've got two candidates, there's just one microphone available and you've got to pass it back and forth. Uh, Jamie Quam got, I'm sorry, not, not uh, Jamie Quam, Dwayne Quam, I cr uh, combined their names. Dwayne Quam got a turn answering a question, then it was Jamie Malberg's turn to respond, and as she finishes speaking, Quam rips the microphone from her hand and she sort of jumps or startles and it's all on video. Let's take a look and you can hear the crowd sort of gasp, taken aback when he grabs the mic out of her hand. That formula increases over time um, with deflation. Thank you. Oh, I see a rebuttal is required. Thank you. The problem we've got in education is we are funding failure. <laughs> so he gives this very angry rebuttal, which also was just terrible policy. I mean, his education policy is also terrible, but maybe we'll get to that. And then when he's done with this rebuttal, he goes to hand the mic back to Jamie Malberg, and she doesn't immediately take it. She just sort of seems to want nothing to do with this guy. And he tosses the mic at her. And if you're listening to what we're about to play and not watching it, like if you're listening on the radio or, or on the audio podcast, you're going to hear a crashing sound, and that's him throwing a live microphone onto the table in front of Jamie Malberg. Take a look. And the formula builds in funding failure. Okay. Thank you for the rebuttal. And so the next question um, <laughs> um, is from the floor. What a disgusting human being. And I, I was watching this. I don't know how many people have seen the film Office Space, the cult classic hmm. Office Space. This guy's physical appearance reminds, and his demeanor, reminds me of a cross between Milton from Office Space <laughs> and Tom from Office Space. We have a side by side by side <laughs> that, I, that I made yesterday. And you'll see Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne Quam on the left, uh, Milton from Office Space in the middle, and Tom from Office Space on the right. Um, That's yeah. unfortunate. It's an unfortunate thing, yeah. This is the new civility. Anyway, he later apologized and said he, he ripped the mic out of her hand and then threw it back at her because he was nervous. And that's kind of funny because if Dwayne Quam was running against another big male like him, would nervousness also lead to him snatching the mic from his opponent and then throwing it back at them? Or is that something that nervousness causes only when you're sitting next to a woman like Jamie Malberg? I'm just asking, Pat. Oh, yeah, just I mean, totally. Questions. When I get nervous, I start attacking people borderline and get triggered in this way. Maybe this is smart in some way. Like, maybe in the era of Trump, this is what Republican voters in Minnesota want to see. I mean, I guess it's possible, although I don't know that much about this, this particular district. And then mo to, to kind of bring it back full circle, his rebuttal also was a rebuttal of terrible actual ideas about education that he espouses. Like, his ideas as bad as snatching the microphone from his opponent and then throwing it back at her, his ideas about education are maybe even more atrocious and disgusting. Yeah, he sounded so excited, so ready to talk about education policy. And then when you listen to his answer, it's devoid of any meaning. It's horrible. Uh, would you be shocked, Pat, if I told you that no one respects women more than this guy? Like, would that would that be believable or would you question that? I think that? I've heard that somewhere before. Yeah, somebody I think else maybe says that. he respects women second most behind someone else I'm thinking of. He has binders full of women who want nothing, nothing to do with him whatsoever. Anyway, if you're a voter in this district, uh, you can vote this guy out in November. I encourage you to do that. And I also encourage you to follow The David Pakman Show on Instagram at David Pakman show. Follow me on Instagram at david.pakman. Part two of my interview with Nathan J. Robinson is coming up next. Importantly, about the intellectual dark web, a subject which Nathan J. Robinson has written about a lot. Do, do we call him Nathan J. Robinson because there are other Nathan Robinsons that are prominent? Oh, like yeah. The former it's basketball the, player. It's not the NBA point guard that we're about to have on for the interview. And so. I think there's another Nathan Robinson as well. I like that. Nathan J. Robinson, just to make it super clear. That's like, remember uh, that lawyer, Howard K. Stern? 
mm. who would go because he didn't want to be confused with Howard Stern, the radio host. So he would go by Howard K. Stern, even though like he's Howard Stern, just like the other Howard Stern. It almost makes you want to have a middle initial, right? Just in case there's any confusion between you and another David Pakman. The, the other David Pakman has a middle name. So I'm just David Pakman. The other David Pakman is David B. Pakman. So you can, like, if somebody says David B. Pakman, it's the venture capitalist. That actually works out for you pretty well. Oh, then, I love it. Because you get to keep your full name. And the Wikipedia page for David Pakman is mine. And you have to go to David B. Pakman to find his Wikipedia page, which is great, right? I mean, that works out great for me. This almost makes me want to snatch the mic away from you. Please do. Uh, okay, please vote. That's, uh, I feel like that's my Jeb Bush. Please clap. Please vote in November because we've got to get this guy out. Quick break, Nathan J. Robinson, and then a lot of other great stuff going on today. One of today's sponsors is Skillshare, which is an incredible online learning community offering over 10,000 high-quality online courses on a huge variety of topics. First 500 who click the link under this video will get two entire months of totally free access to every single class that Skillshare offers. You'll have free access to courses on music, art, photography, business, computer programming, cooking, meditation, and everything in between. I think you'll have no problem finding courses that are perfect for you. Just took a really great class on graphic design, which I know nothing about, but I'm trying to learn. Our show is giving you two entire months of totally free access to every course Skillshare offers risk-free. If you click the link under this video, you'll have two months to take classes on anything you're passionate about, classes taught by real people who share that passion. And after that, you can keep getting access to the entire site for less than 10 bucks a month. Just click the link under this video to redeem your two free months of Skillshare. But hurry, it's only available to the first 500 who sign up.